Okay, so in the never-ending quest to decide what is the next step I should do, um, let's look at my options. I could put the frets in, <clears throat> I could put the nut in, I could drill the uh, tuner holes, I could drill the neck pocket holes. I'm going to prepare for my next step. I, have, <laughs> I actually can't decide yet which one I'm going to do. But I'm going to take this leftover um, plank of wood here, I'm going to cut it in half and glue the two halves together to make a bit of a mock body blank because what I need to do pretty soon is I actually need to, in order to drill the tuna holes later, I need to be able to bolt this into something like a, a dummy body and also bolt in um, the bridge plate and get some string or, or some, maybe some guitar strings and run them up the guitar to see where the, the tuna hole should be located. So I want to do that on a, on a mock body pretty soon. So I'm going to make a mock body out of this length of wood. This process will also allow me to um, practice drilling a neck pocket with my router. wood glue. So I'm actually going to use the back edge of this clamp as a bit of a straight edge. So as these two pieces come together, I, I guess I want this top face to be as flat as possible. So if I lay this clamp edge right down on the wood, that's going to keep the two pieces as flat as possible. In the meantime, I think I'm going to do some fine sanding of the fingerboard. So this is some um, 240. So I'm doing this by hand very lightly because I don't really want to change the radius of the fretboard. So I don't want to use straight edges and things like that, which um, could be a bit too aggressive. I'm just going to lightly do this with my by hand. Like I'm, that's how lightly I'm going. It there's really I'm not taking off much in the way of material. It's just smoothing out the surface. It's already looking better. Oh, it feels so smooth. So it's after a little bit of 400 grit. Well, the matter I may as well do the rest. It's been about 24 hours, so that's fine. It's going to look a little bit like that. So remember, I want to be able to figure out where the tuners are going to go by laying down some strings, but I'm going to need to cut the nut slot first. And I have some nut blanks to do that with, so I'm going to put a dummy nut in there, cut the two outside slots, or just, just lightly kind of cut them in, and that'll help me to get my string alignment figured out. So this is the nut slot here that I need to cut out, I guess. Now this is the file that I would use to do that with. It's got smooth sides, but it's got teeth on each edge. But because it's the exact width, I run the risk of going over the edges. So I think what I'm going to do is take my Japanese fret saw and actually kind of chop a little bit out of each side of it. Nip a bit off so that the uh, the file has some sort of groove to run inside of. As you well know by now, I don't really know what I'm doing. Kind of making it up as I go, so I hope this works. It seems to be working. So now I can use my nut slot file to actually go the rest of the way. Okay, so this nut slot's pretty good now. Hopefully you can see that the, um, the top of the nut slot is the right width. I can pretty much comfortably get a, 
and not blank in there. But it doesn't go much further because, as you can see, the side walls of the nut slot are not perfectly parallel and it gets slightly narrower towards the bottom. So I've got a couple of choices. I've, I've tried to widen the bottom of the slot using um, a little ruler, a bit of sandpaper, and trying to sand that out. But I'm just worried about changing the, the geometry at the top. I could accidentally enlarge the top and then I'm really in trouble. And I don't want to gouge out any more on the bottom because the bottom of the slot actually follows the radius of the fingerboard. It's a 12 inch radius across there. So I think what I'm going to do is try and shave my nut to match that slot. So I'm going to put a taper on on this and then I should be okay. I don't really have a strategy for this, I'm just kind of winging it. I'm holding it at a slight angle and kind of estimating. Okay, so that fits into the slot now. But obviously the slot has a radius to it so it doesn't sit along the bottom nicely. So I'm going to lay my sandpaper on the fretboard directly try and sand a radius into the bottom of this nut. So I've been doing this for a while now, but it doesn't really seem to be working very well. It's just not matching the right shape. So I'm going to try a different way. So I'm going to draw a line onto the bottom of this nut blank, and then I'm going to try and sand it to shape using the bobbin sander. Now I actually made it intentionally a little bit more than 12 inch radius. I, I made it so that the uh, it'd be a little bit more curved. That way it doesn't rock in the middle. It'll definitely have a bit more space in the middle and it'll tend to sit on the two outer edges. Okay. Good. So it still has a little bit of overhang on each side. So I might just trim that up a little bit. Nice and flush on both sides. Okay, so next thing on the list is I need to route a neck pocket into this uh, faux blank so that I can um, install the bridge and run some strings along here to get the locations for my tuner holes. This is all basically to get the tuner hole locations. So the issue is I've created a non-standard neck so this uh, heel end of my neck is not a standard fender or any other brand measurements. So I've got to make my own neck pocket template. I couldn't just buy one. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll, I'll clamp the neck into position. Then I'm going to take a few pieces of scrap MDF which has a factory straight edge on it. And I'm going to place those around the neck like this and fix them into place using uh, super glue and tape. And then when I remove the neck, I've got a routing, a temporary routing template right there for me. That will be a perfect fit for my neck. So I'm going to go with the um, Fender Telecaster neck pocket depth, which is 76 millimeters from the front to the back of the pocket. Not that it really matters, it's just tradition. Okay. Okay, so there is my neck pocket routing jig ready to go. Okay, I'm just comparing some measurements from my acoustic guitar here. One of the dimensions that I want to try and copy is the height of the strings above um, the deck of the guitar essentially. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring how high the fingerboard sits above the soundboard. Looks like that's almost 7mm and for me that's an important specification because it, it's, um, it's related to 
when my fingers are resting on there if I'm anchoring and, and playing with a pick or if I'm doing finger style guitar the amount of room that I've got underneath the strings in this area um, is something that contributes to this guitar feeling familiar so I'm trying to copy as much of those familiar specifications as I can so with my neck that I've made if I want to get the fingerboard to be seven mils above the body I've also got to take into account the pick guard depth because that's actually what's going to um, be the deck or the uh, the top of the guitar so this pick guard material is one and a half millimeters thick so that means if my neck is 27.24 I have to minus from that 7 mil and then add one and a half mil so the depth I've got to aim for with my neck pocket is 27 and a quarter millimeters minus let's go 6.9 millimeters plus 1.5 millimeters I'm aiming for that figure and I get to do a practice run with this body blank that I've made. So I'm going to be using this 3 8 uh, router, it's a pattern bit, and uh, you might remember that I, I based my corners of the, the neck heel here on this measurement so that when I did this routing at this point everything would fit. Um, I guess we'll find out how, how well I did, uh, but this is the traditional fender neck pocket corner radius so that's why I chose it. Alright, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is the neck fits nicely. It's quite snug in there. The bad news is it's too deep. So somewhere along the lines I've got my measurements or my, my maths wrong. I think what I did was I, I was supposed to um, subtract one and a half mils for the scratch plate but I think I may have added it. Anyway, um, this is about a bit over two mils too deep. Um, so part of that is my maths, part of it is I think I just wasn't accurate enough with the router depth, I think I just went a bit too deep, so I'm glad I did this on my practice uh, piece and not on the, the real body wood, so that's good, at least I know now that I need to be a lot more careful. Measure twice, cut once as they say. So the neck is a little bit twisted to one, one side, um, but that's okay, a lot of guitars are. So in order to calculate where the bridge has got to go, I've basically got to measure from the 0 fret to the 12th fret, and then that's the distance that the, um, the saddles need to be. Also you have to take into account that these saddles can be moved, they have um, some setup adjustment to become longer or shorter, so you have to basically place them in about the average position of that distance right there. So I've got a mark right there. Okay after a bit of mucking around with numbers um, I've found my mounting position for the bridge. You can see here that the uh, center hole, center mounting hole is going to be slightly to the right of the actual um, natural line in the wood, the natural center line. Um, that's because that's actually the the center line of the neck geometry, which is all that really matters here. So um, now I'm going to mount this in place. This is a hinge drill bit set, and uh, you use these to actually guide the drill bit right into a hole. They've actually got flanged tips, and uh, those can actually follow the flanged opening of that mounting hole, just like a hinge would. As this pushes down into a pilot hole it actually the drill bit extends and this makes sure that um, it stays centered. The other cool thing about this drill bit is that uh, once you've drilled the pilot hole you can unscrew the front half of it and then it just becomes a regular drill bit and you can use that to finish off the hole.
So now that I've got my two outside saddles in place, I can run some strings up to the headstock to get my tuner locations. Okay, next thing is I've got to mark in string locations on the nut. So I've checked this on my acoustic, so I know it's going to be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Alright, so I'm going to string this up, the two outside strings, with the, the gauge that I intend to use um, on this guitar, which is 11 to 49. Okay. So what I'm attempting to do here is I'm trying to work out where I should place my tuning posts. Because I want it to be, I want it to have perfectly straight string pull, if possible. But I also want it to look right. You know, there's nothing worse than having strings that don't look straight. So the problem with this is that everything's kind of moving around and even when I figure I've got this tuner in the right position it's I'm really not sure how to mark it because like you know it, it I can't see directly where this post would line up with the wood underneath so I've measured this post and it's six mil so I'm going to use a six mil drill bit to simulate the post location and that's what I'll mark onto the wood Alright, there's my first hole. Now I'll make the second hole, but really I don't have any choice. Like, once I've made that hole, the other holes are predetermined um, from there. So uh, really what I'm doing is I'm double checking. I'm going to do a... I'm making a mark there, I'll make a mark there, and I'll see if they line up with what I think it should be. Okay, I've I've laid these two necks on top of each other because I've noticed that the holes that I marked did not line up with where they should have been. So there's the first one, and if I look over here you can see that that last hole is quite short. So I can demonstrate this another way. If I drop my drill bit down there you can see that the holes line up pretty well. Up at this end, not quite. So I guess I've got to work out which one of these two holes is off or if maybe I need to split the difference between the two um, or maybe as I mentioned earlier in this series maybe having straight string pull is not going to be possible considering Telecaster tuners are pretty much predetermined to be um, spaced this way. Okay I'm trying this again but this time I'm running a ruler straight down the length of where the string will go and I'm seeing if I can do it that way. Okay, after a lot of toing and froing and trying to decide where to put things, um, I, I basically have just chosen the location for that one and the rest are predetermined by the angle of this neck and the distance that they have to be um, set out from each other. I also just kind of lined it up alongside my existing headstock to kind of check it. And it, it does look like um, the outside one is going to pull a little bit to the right and this one here is going to pull a little bit to the left. But when you look at it from, you know, back here, I don't think you're going to be able to see it and I don't think it's really going to affect anything in terms of playability or tuning. So I think I'm just going to commit to this now and cross my fingers. So I'm ignoring some of my previous markings and just going with this first hole is going to be done by eye and the rest are going to be done off this hole. Okay, so I'm calling that a pilot hole and I'm not going to drill any further than that because I'm going to come back with the... Um, the drill press and finish this off but it's right up against that line where I wanted it and I'm gonna now mark my other holes based off of that one. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to drill these holes out with a piece of um, supporting wood behind so that I don't get any tear out on uh, the back. Again, I'm going to do this by hand, <laughs> which may seem crazy, but I just don't trust power tools at the moment. Well, that's the first hole drilled, but unfortunately there is a little bit of tear out on the back. Not that it'll matter because it'll be covered by a great big tuner, but um, if you can avoid it, you you know, you do want to try and avoid it. So I'm not sure why that happened. Anyway, let's just keep going. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, it's not in, like perfectly clean, but it is cleaner than the first hole. Cool. It's kind of a pride thing with a lot of luthiers, I think, to make sure that there's no tear away on the back of um, tuner holes, but in reality, no one will ever know unless they take the tuning pegs off. And even then, they still might not care. I probably need to do a little bit of um, cleanup along the front here as well, although I'm gonna be enlarging these holes anyway because these are really just the pilot holes for the tuners on the back. On the front, there's actually gonna be these larger uh, I guess you'd call them ferrules or uh, inserts and they, they actually go over the top and they have a lip on them which will cover any burrs or or tear away anyway so it's all fairly gonna be all fairly neat and tidy in the end anyway just doing some checking here of how straight they are and to the eye they look pretty straight but um, there's a little bit of unevenness where I think maybe this one here is um, a little bit further to the top than the others, like, you know, just by a fraction. So when I drill the ferrule hole for that one, I might see if I can guide it further towards that way, whereas the others all seem to be in line. If I take that one out, the others are very flat, so that one just needs to maybe be guided a little bit in that direction. I'm using a hand drill, I'm running it backwards, so it's barely cutting at all, and it's just starting to widen that hole and give me a beveled edge which I can actually, it's sort of starting me off and the um, the chisel tip of this is kind of guiding itself into the center. So it's going very slowly which is what I like. She fits quite well. It's um, not too tight, not too loose. All right, well, I think that's the way to go then. And it does seem to have um, drilled a nice straight hole. It looks like the initial pilot hole has has helped center the bigger one all the way down. So it's actually pretty, pretty good and true and straight. Nope, that didn't work. It seems like the pilot hole really is pulling the drill bit into the center, and despite my efforts to kind of guide it more that way, that's not really working. So I've only gone a few millimeters in. I need to come up with a, a different approach here. Okay, well, I can't really think of much else to do here other than um, because the drill bit is being guided straight down by the pilot hole, all I can think of to do is to put a little bit more pressure on the drill bit, and like literally with my thumb here, just press on the edge of the drill bit and kind of force the drill a little bit that way but I don't think it's going to do anything really, I don't think it's going to help much. Huh. You know what? That's actually kind of worked. The outside two are a little bit off which I didn't even notice that happening. But visually I can't really, it's, I don't know, they look pretty straight to me bothering me too much. You know, maybe I'm splitting hairs here. Maybe this is straight enough, you know? Straight as it needs to be to look good. What do you think? 
Well, I guess that's that. Uh, yeah, which brings me to my next dilemma. What should my next step be? I think frets. I think I need to put the frets in now. 